This stream contains fast flashing images that may affect viewers who are susceptible to photosensitive epilepsy or other photosensitivities. Viewer discretion is advised. Ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to this. 16 of the world's best teams have come to LA with the same goal, win it all and make history. Hello everyone and welcome to day one of Valorant Champions 2023. And we're coming at you live from the Shrine Expo in Los Angeles, California. I'm the bald guy yelling at you, Golden Boy. Of course, joined here by my co-pilot Mimi and the one and only Sean Gares in the house. Let's give it up for Sean Gares, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so Appreciate cool. it. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you get up for Mimi as well? Yeah. There we go. That's what I like. All right, guys. Well, look. Here's the thing you gotta know about this event, all right? It's gonna be played on patch 7.02. Now, of course, that means a big headline here. Deadlock is playable. But the question on everyone's mind, will we see her debut here on the world stage? Mimi, I wanna get your thoughts on this agent because I would like to see it happen personally. I feel like one team will play her. Someone's gonna try and get ahead, get that edge. You know, if you're the first mm -hmm. to master an agent, you show some new tech, you can catch people off guard. But right now, I feel like she's not super strong in pro play. So I don't think she'll catch on and be like meta defining for the tournament, but I could definitely see her as a gimmick. I could see her as a gimmick on certain maps, maybe like bind or split. I could find value for her there, but I, I really struggled to see who's going to run her. DRX has been quick to pick up some of these new agents True. with Harbor and Gecko in the past. But honestly, I keep, I've been keeping my ears to the streets, GB. And to the streets. It's, it's not looking too good not, for the deadlock the, picks. The deadlock stocks are at an all-time yeah. low right now. It's okay. It's still early. I mean, look, it would be cool to see it, but it makes a lot of sense. So new agent, biggest event of the year. Do you really want to take that risk if you don't have to? Yeah, and it's also kind of tough to know what her place in the meta is because she plays so differently than any of the other Sentinels. And also, for a lot of these teams, there hasn't been that much time. If you were playing LCQ without deadlock, you have like two weeks off. You're flying to Los Angeles, getting set for for this event. It's just really hard to turn around the new agent that I don't think anyone really knows fully how to implement yet. Yeah, I feel like my pipe dream is that Angel locks deadlock, right? <laughs> if that's, someone's gonna that's do That's actually what my hopes and dreams are made of. Angel insta locking deadlock, but he even said in the interview, they only had like four days of practice after LCQ, so. Yeah. It's kind of crushing my dreams right there. Crushing the deadlock dreams, but it's okay. Hey, the tournament's still very young. I mean, heck, we haven't even played a game yet, so you never know what could happen here. But we have 16 teams from all over the globe and a ton of matches that are gonna be playing out here on the global stage. Just go ahead and check out this quick video that explains what's in store. Valorant Champions is kicking off on August 6th. Here's what you need to know before the tournament begins. Champions is the global finale of the 2023 Valorant Champions Tour. 16 of the world's best teams will meet in Los Angeles to compete for the title Valorant World Champion. Let's take a look at how each of these teams earned the spots for this event. Nine teams qualified directly into Champions by finishing top three within the respective international leagues. Four more teams earned an invitation through three last chance qualifiers hosted by the ILs. Each LCQ qualified one team, with the exception of VCT EMEA, who earned the right to qualify two teams as a result of Fnatic winning Masters Tokyo. Finally, three team representatives from China were selected for champions based on their strong performance at regional tournaments. Taking place from August 6th through to the 26th, Champions will begin with a group stage followed by a double elimination bracket stage. First qualified teams will be sorted into four random groups. Each group will play through a four team double elimination bracket with two teams emerging from each of the four groups. Those eight teams will then be randomly placed into a double elimination bracket with teams from the same group being placed on opposite sides of the bracket teams will play through each round of the bracket until a single team remains, earning the title of Valorant World Champion. To learn more about champions, check out ValorantEsports.com and follow our socials for further updates. Good luck to all the competitors and we'll see you in Los Angeles. 
So now that we know how this whole thing works, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the groups because when the groups were drawn, all right, we uh, we had a, a group that maybe could have been a group of death. We just weren't too sure. And we decided to call the other groups different names as well. And uh, Mimi, I believe you got group A. Why'd you name it that? I mean, I picked group APAC because the Asian teams are going to win here. Paper X, EDG, the clear favorites. But I'm really curious about this uh, why, why, But Mimi, why didn't you call it group APAC? That on, works. Can, can we talk about the, the paragraph here? <laughs> well, You're writing a dissertation? Yeah. No, no, I just went off. Yeah, what does that say? It, it's my what old came into my head when I saw the group, just like you with a Team APAC. Okay. But when I saw Group B, I just thought, oh my god, there's no way EG can lose this group. They've been given the easiest group in Champions, and our entire region will be in shambles if EG fails to qualify out of this group. <laughs> my brain cannot handle the thought of EG failing to make playoffs. Please just get out of groups and end the second place curse narrative that Yinsu just keeps talking about. Please. Also, a huge event for Turkey because foot also makes it out too. Brevity is really your strong suit, I think. <laughs> I tried my best to be short and sweet. Yeah, you really nailed it. I mean, we asked you for just like a three-word name. You gave us 30. So look <laughs> at you, thriving. Only way Above you know and how. Beyond. Uh, group C, I decided to call this one Fnatic and the other guys. Uh, because, uh, you know, let's, let, I mean, no disrespect to the guys, but, you know. Respectfully. Of respectfully. respectfully they were the respectfully, other guys. Respectfully. <laughs> disrespectfully. <laughs> Simply <laughs> not fanatic. And the last one was Group D, uh, the group of disappointment. It should be the group, group of death, death, but in my opinion, it's the group of disappointment. And These are all that? the teams that have consistently disappointed us, that haven't been wow. as good as they would. Not consistently, but at Tokyo, people were having rough performances. Loud went near flawless to win in Americas, and then they go out early. Team Liquid upset Fnatic, and then they, like, win a game and then go out. And and DRX is switching their roster back and forth. It's just the group where it should be the best teams. Navi as well. We thought they were going to be great, and then they're just kind of scraping by out of LCQ. It's all these teams that have been in finals, that have won tournaments before, that you expect to be great, but who have been struggling. And it's really the question of who's going to rise up and not be a disappointment and kind of rewrite what happened to them in Tokyo. The funny thing is I agree with Mimi. I think it is kind of the group of disappointment, but when you talk to the players, these teams are still held in super high regard, and they view Group D as the group of Death. All the players I've talked to. I mean, to any of these teams could show up and yeah. just be championship Change winning levels exactly. out of nowhere. Yeah, exactly. Well, actually, that go ahead and seg uh, segues us. Excuse me. Words are hard, you think. I'm not used to hearing myself in the arena, so, you know, you got to give me a minute here. Uh, but we're kicking things off for Group D. Now, we're going to see brother versus brother. We're also going to see uh, DRX taking on our 2022 champions in Loud. There are two excellent matches that are on the docket here, Sean. And honestly, you couldn't have asked for a better way to start things off with four or very familiar names to the Valorant community. Yeah, I can't wait to see this opening game actually between Team Liquid and Navi. I think I think this is going to be a quite a banger. I I, th I have very high expectations for both of these teams coming into the year, and I still do. I think if one of them can just make it out of this group, that's the hard thing about Group D is you don't even know which team is favored to make it out. It, both of these teams could theoretically bomb out. Yeah. yeah. And that second match as well, uh, you don't really know what to expect either. Loud, will they be back in form? Can they defend their title after winning champions for Brazil next, last year? They have so much pressure on them. And it's the same case for the other teams in this group. Everyone has those high expectations, but yeah. only two can make it out. Yeah, and, and look, we, we are ready for the surprises. We're ready for the upsets. But you want to know what's something really interesting. Somehow, Bren and Sideshow have eerily been accurate with their predictions. They're now, numbers. Yeah, they have to be wizards. So so let's see what they think is going to happen in Group D with everyone's favorite segment. It's Groupology. I think it's the first time we're doing this. Maybe. Welcome to Groupology, where me and Bren peer into the future. Group D, does it stand for death or disappointment? One thing's for sure, all of these teams are going to play the exact opposite of the way you think. So I think for this one, Bren, we should be predicting the opposite of the way that we think they should go. Okay, so the teams that lose, advance. That implies that we're aligned on what teams we think are going to go through. And well... I don't have anything on my side, so you're the you're the person that has to decide everything. <laughs> team Liquid Navi. Yeah. Which team do you think is not going to win this game? Team Liquid. Unbelievable pick. <laughs> that is th that is emphatically wrong, and yet somehow we're going to end up with the correct team advancing. I think. Okay. DRX Loud. DRX Loud. Which team loses this game? Uh, they're in the next room. I feel. I know. I'm not. We got to keep our voices down, keep down a little down bit a little here. Bit. DRX Loud, Brent. Probably. I think Loud lose. Okay, well, you've got to have them advancing there. Okay. You're literally picking the underdog in all of these games. <laughs> okay, so that means then that we have these other teams down here, but Liquid yep. Loud, get me those stickers. Okay, Liquid, Liquid loud. loud, yep, I'm on it. Um, which team do you think is going to win? Uh, I think that 
I think Liquid win that game. So you'll have to put Loud. Through. Okay, Loud. Top but seeds. Don't top tell, seeds. Don't, don't tell. They're in the, in the next door. door. <laughs> Give me the Liquid one. Sorry, there you go. Here. What else do you need? I need I need Navi. <laughs> DRX. <laughs> We're running out of time. One. We're running out of time. DRX quickly. DRX. Yep. Oh, who, lo who loses that game? Uh, I think um, I think DRX. No way. Okay, put them through. Okay. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> nonsense. And who loses this one? Uh, Liquid. Uh, DRX. Uh, uh, I think I think DRX. Ten is. seconds, Brennan. Put a team through. What have we done? As DRX and Loud. <laughs> What have we done? <laughs> they were on to something for like the first half of that. It's like they didn't watch Masters Tokyo and they just read the crew. <laughs> oh, and then to make it even better was like, we, we, I can't confirm they were in the other room, <laughs> which made recording that segment even better. Oh man, okay guys, well listen, all throughout the event, when you're posting about champs on the social medias and whatnot, make sure you use those hashtags, Valorant Champions as well as VCT. And that of course brings us to today's MasterCard fan poll. We want to know who's winning champs Who's winning today? Who, not who's winning champs. Sorry, that wasn't me. I made that one up. Team who's winning, winning today's opening matchup? <laughs> Team, don't start with me. Ooh. Team Liquid or Navi, scan the QR code, and then we'll have the results on screen uh, in just a little bit. But what's been fascinating about this matchup as we get ready to talk about it here, it, it's that, you know, this is kind of like a weird changing of the guard, right? Like, you know, Mimi, you have uh, a Navi, a team that really has been stalwart in staying in that top four. They've won Copenhagen. They've had incredible runs in their, in their career and they've always been that like EMEA gatekeeper and now Liquid have taken that title it feels. I mean not even a gatekeeper Navi was always the second they and at the times yeah. considered the best team in EMEA all through last year and the last time these two teams matched up between Team Liquid and Navi that's when that kind of changing of the guard happened for the first time. TL beat them went on this huge run ended up winning in EMEA and knocked Navi down onto this kind of downward spiral that they've been in for a lot of this year and now in this matchup, I think if Navi win, they have a chance to kind of settle that score and have an opportunity to maybe be considered that second best squad in EMEA again. Yeah, I think you have to say Liquid is the favorite in this matchup, right? They won EMEA. They are the only team this year to have beaten Fnatic. Yeah. That is such an incredible Not according to Brendo. No. <laughs> Apparently yeah. Navi are supposed to win, yes. Liquid's supposed to lose. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I kind of agree though. I think Navi has been cooking with some of these comps and they're crazy. But I don't know how you prep for something like that. And with Angel in the lead, and I feel like he has a good pulse on EMEA as a region, yeah. this could easily go Navi's way. Yeah, well, let's actually go ahead and start first with Navi and talk about this team because they obviously have just so much uh, so much firepower behind them, but it really does beg the question, Mimi, if whether or not they still got it, you know? Because it, it, can, they, can they channel the energy that they had in Copenhagen? Yeah, you want Navi to be considered one of the teams in contention with the tournament, but thus far they, they've been on like their, their Nepo baby arc this year. Fnatic's go. winning every tournament, so there's a second slot available, so we can just coast on by, get <laughs> second or third place, make it to every international event, show up, show up, you know, play fine, win a game or two, but it's not the Navi that we expected. This should have been a super team. This was an FPX who won championships, now under the Navi banner, picking up CNED, who also won champions in 2021. The fact that they're not expected to be one of the favorites is a huge surprise. Yeah, Shaq meme, laser eyes time though, you know? They're, they're about to turn up for a chance. I'm telling you, CNED, they're gonna put him on real roles now. He's gonna be playing Jet. They finally changed their, their split comp to have him playing Jet. I just think that they've learned so much about their team and how they function. I know it hasn't looked pretty up until this point, yeah. but I have faith in Angel as an in-game leader to put it all together. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Angel because we actually have Mitch standing by to get a quick word with the one and only Angel from Na'Vi. Mitch, what you got? Well, we've got Navi arriving down here. Let's let's just pull you in for a second here, Angel. Hey. Not going to sneak past us this time. I've got a question for you on the way through. Listen, okay. you've already beaten this squad of Liquid in the past, but they had a stand-in. When Safe returned, it didn't go so well. What's going to be different this time? Um, much more pressure for them and uh, less pressure for us. Okay, not feeling any pressure today then. That's good to hear. I'll let you go. Good luck in the game. Good luck in your prep. 
A man of very, very few words, but you know, uh, not wrong. <laughs> because when you actually think about it, yeah, the, you know, the, the pressure on this Navi team, yeah, there's always going to be pressure, obviously, because, you know, you're here at Champions, you want to perform, you want to win, you want to hoist, hoist a trophy over your head. But Mimi, he's not wrong in that Liquid, they're the ones that are coming into this one. ENEA champs, lots of pressure on them. Navi kind of just can play to that advantage. Yeah, I mean, they're the second LCQ seed out of EMEA. The pressure isn't with them, but I think there should be expectations of this team being good. Like you were talking about, Sean, I feel like in this LCQ, well, it was only four games they played. They fixed a lot of their compositions. They were putting people back on roles that made sense. They were starting to get a little bit more with the meta. Navi is still a team that gets silly with their comp sometimes, yes. but they were fixing that a bit at LCQ. We're not looking at the grand finals. Don't talk about no, that. No, we don't happen. talk about the grand finals. The that that actually did not happen. That was completely a troll grand finals. But I agree. I agree completely. I think they fixed a lot coming into this. And if you look back at that LCQ run, so many things that went wrong are so easily fixed. They lost 1v3s, 1v4s to Cold Amenta. You know, they lost silly situations that yeah. I think, you know, Angel and Doombros can fix in an hour and five minutes, oh. as Lakey says, yeah. Potentially. Very specific time frame. Yeah. <laughs> it's possible, though. It is possible. You know what, though? Actually, you bring up the, the compositions, and we really wanted to illustrate this point here. So, And, and maybe you guys in the venue can have fun with it as well. So uh, here's what we're going to do. We have an image here of four totally random compositions, and we need to pick out which one's the actual Navi uh, comp. So which one do you guys think is one, two, three, or four? Go ahead, say it out loud uh, to have people in the house. I heard someone say five. Five's not on there. <laughs> I mean, it could be. What do you think it is, Mimi? I think that, oh, dude, I I feel like it might be number question. four. They were experimenting, but that's kind of a sane comp. I think that's a loud comp, actually. Maybe it's two. The crazy thing the is double one is too sane. Sentinel? One is too sane. That's the double duelist split comp. There's just no way they run that. I feel like it's either two or three. I don't remember Phoenix. I, I, feel, I feel like, like they don't run hard for this. So I'm going to go three. Three? Okay. Mimi? I'm on two. Two. We got two and three, and uh, crowd said 80. So let's see what we have. Let's see. We move this forward. I'm actually very curious because... Uh, and it's let's three! Go. Oh, my. Wait. That's when fire. was this? I don't even remember. What <laughs> map would that be on that they're playing Breach? Is that a Pearl? No. It would have to be Potion. What was that? Chef. I am, the TLDR is that <laughs> Navi gets very silly, and that makes them a tough team to prep for. I think on average, it's something like teams play like 12 comps across the year. Navi Ridiculous. has played like 25 or something along those lines. They're constantly changing. It's kind of the ethos of Angel as an IGL. And sometimes it's too silly, and sometimes it makes them look brilliant. And it's gotten the question of which Navi are you going to get on the day? Yeah. yeah, I think he's really overcooked a lot of these comps, like that one right there. What he's going for from like a CS mentality is just you're so hard to read. You're so hard to prep for. And so when your opponent comes into the match, they can't even watch your VODs because honestly, you're about to change your comp and they know that. So mm. they they have to focus on their game and you know what they're going to do. And the thing has been that everyone, when Navi's been struggling this year, has been coping. The players have been saying, it's all about champions. Doesn't matter if we yeah. win champions, yes. if we make a run here. And the question is really, were they actually being silly? Were they actually making all these mistakes? Or have they been saving the good stuff for this event? And I think that's kind of cope, but there's also a chance of it. And you can't throw that idea out completely. Yeah, and while talking about like the bigger picture of it all, right? Obviously, you can go into the compositions, the map picks, you know, all that stuff. But, you know, focusing on the individuals here, it's really hard to say that like the individuals of Navi wouldn't pop off when you consider that like Sugetsu and Shao, for yes. example, just absolutely immaculate. They're so good all the time. And on a stage like this, I have no doubt in my mind that the Shao show is going to come back for a sequel and Sugetsu is going to try and maybe pick up another MVP. Of course. I think Sugetsu might be one of my favorite players in the entire scene. His setups have always been brilliant, especially in these big moments, in the big tournaments. So I'm sure he's going to bust out some tricks here on the Sentinel roll. And that's honestly what Navi's going to need to carry them through. And when this team has struggled, it's always been these guys to save them. When Angel's going for first bloods round after round, it's these guys following things up, trading, winning in these late round clutch situations. They're both world-class players. And no matter how much this team has struggled, they always show up and perform. Sugetsu in particular, I mean, looking at all the communities kind of takes on like who will be the top 10, top 15 players. I think despite the consensus that Navi might go out earlier than expected, people are still rating this guy as one of the absolute top dogs. He can never be underrated. He can never be counted out in any situation.
amazing. I mean, again, Sugetsu just continues to deliver time and time again. Xiao does the same thing as well for his team. Like, there really are a lot of weapons here, and, and it is scary, and Liquid are going to have a lot on their hands. It's not something that they're not all, you know, like, uh, unfamiliar with. They've played plenty of times in the past, but now as we move on to Team Liquid, we actually have Mitch standing by with Safe to get his thoughts going into this matchup. And here comes Team Liquid ready for today's game. I've got Safe yeah. joining us for a quick word before we kick off today. And listen, last international event, it maybe didn't go according to plan. What can the people at home expect to be different this time? I think uh, they should expect a Liquid that wants to redeem themselves on the international stage. I think uh, we're going to do good things here. Oh, yeah, this is going to be a, a, a big swing back for Team Liquid. Uh, definitely. We're going to knock people out. All right, looking forward to seeing you on the stage today. Best of luck. I'll let you get off to it. Thanks. All I'm saying is I saw that jersey. That was all I could focus on was yeah. Star Wars jersey. Sorry about that. I actually went and just bought a jersey right now. Oh. And then, <laughs> I'm sorry. Too big of a Star Wars fan. In any case, though, guys, uh, he, he, well, I think that what's interesting about all this is that Team Liquid have really been up and down more ways than one, whether it's the whatever happened at Lockett oh, or no. their run at the EMEA finals and even like what took place in Tokyo. It just feels like this Liquid team has really been struggling to keep that consistency on check. But the thing is that the highs are so high. Remember, they are. this is the only team to beat Fnatic this year. We can't say that enough. Liquid has already made history, had their moments where they stepped up and looked like the best. But I really feel like their issue is pressure. When they come to these international events, they look good in the early rounds. They show us the performance that they have at home. And then when it comes to late rounds, when it comes to adaptation under pressure, we often see the cracks forming. A player like Safe or Soulcast going for some solo plays, breaking out from the ideas that normally make Liquid so good. And I think really getting that mental under check Getting used to the pressure here at Champions is going to be so pivotal if we're going to be seeing the Liquid who won EMEA. I, I couldn't agree more. I think what Liquid needs is a big performance out of the two players that they don't typically get it from, Solkus and Redgar, because I know Nats is going to get his, and I know Yompi is going to get his, and I know Safe is going to have pop-off games left and right this event. So it's really on those two to be you know, a fourth player in the server. I think it's fine if one of them goes missing because of the star players on the other side of sure. the scoreboard, but they need something out of Solkus or Redgar. They absolutely will. And those IGLs are going to be important. And, and Sean, I know you're a pretty experienced guy. You, you've coached teams in Valorant sure. before. You've been a pro player. GB, you're gold. So you guys are going to be pretty knowledgeable gold and about old, this baby. one. We have two players who are both some of the best Omen players in Ooh. the world. The two yeah, IGLs of these teams. I love Omen. Angel, Redgar. I know you're an Omen player yourself. So I wanted you to try and break down some of these plays. This one's from okay. Angel. Can you talk me through this, Sean? Yeah, huh. so let's see here. So Fracture, Omen, they're running the double controller. He's sending it through dish. What the? Wait, why did he TP to cut that distance? I, Can you talk to me about that? I <laughs> I don't know what to talk about, actually. I'm so confused. How how what? could your opponent know what you're doing what about when you don't one? even know? This is this is Redgar. Oh, Maybe God. a little better for you? Oh, I have PTSD from the. This I remember this. Play. Oh, Look at this. my. Look at this TP. Magic. Absolute magic. These guys literally warm up by watching Flex and Joe. <laughs> it shows. Uh, the thing is, though, that both these guys, they're they're silly. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. They're silly, funny, jovial guys who who do insane stuff consistently. Yes. Angel has yeah. something like somehow the most first kills, first deaths on his team, even when they're running like double duelist comps. It's ridiculous. But I think the IGL who's going to harness that silliness into actually making the right plays, into making the right calls, could win today or it could just descend into a little bit of madness. Yeah, I, I just love how layered this game is, right? We have so many different storylines going into it, whether it's the absurdity of the omens, yeah. the bizarre compositions, their stories, but also the coaches <laughs> because yeah. we have two twin brothers coaching these two teams and we wanted to see how similar they actually are so let's go ahead and send it over to mitch who's ready to run some tests on emil and doom bros this will not go well <laughs> two brothers and they're here today before they play to have a little bit of a game of their own uh, you know we always see your players on the server now we're getting to see you guys competing and the game of the day is who knows each other better twin telepathy as it were see if you can get those answers up through the air into the other one's heads you guys understand the game you're going to be asked a question uh, yep. for example what is uh, emil's favorite car at which point you'll have to write down what you think it is he'll write down the correct answer and we'll reveal them ta tallying up the points as we go right. are you ready gentlemen 
ready? Very ready. Let's get into it with the first question then. Keeping it simple to start things off, I want to know what is Emil's favorite skin in the game? Oh. Favorite skin set. Go ahead and write your answers down. You even have to take a second to think about this one. I don't know. Okay. If I don't know, how should he know? So you, you're going to have to think about it real hard and, and send the message over. I'm transferring over. it to you, okay? <laughs> transferring over. Okay. 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 So I didn't went with my first gut feeling. You didn't. You no. might regret it. What was your yeah. gut feeling? My gut feeling was like just the default skins in the game. The default yeah. skins. Oh wow. You you think that lowly of them? Well, let's see what you went with in the end. Reaver. The Reaver oh. skin set. Oh, has he let you down on this? Let's see what the correct answer was. Don't say Prime. Hello. Oh, Shams the, bundle. The ah. 2023 version as well. Okay. Okay. The thing is. My favorite is Reaver. I do play Reaver, so I did him dirty. Oh, wow. Yeah, so he does you've, know. You've played him. Yeah, but yeah, I guess if we go on currently released skins... I thought he would know this. Have you know? played a single game with the skin yet? Yes. Oh, this is almost... So, you're you're kind of game theorying it here. <laughs> I, I like it. So he's throwing curveballs in. Well, let's see right, if you're going to throw a curveball on this one. A little bit easier, perhaps. What is Doom's favorite agent in the game? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you happy with your answers? I'm happy. Okay, well, let's see what the answer submitted was. Emil, show us your guess. Killjoy. Killjoy. And let's see the answer. Uh, I actually don't believe this. Oh, we You've have, also oh, yeah. both drawn a smiley face afterwards. Oh, okay. Okay, well, that is, yeah, yeah. That, is, <laughs> that is an astounding success. Yeah. I, I would almost say neck and neck, because the champ's bundle curveball was a little dirty. We'll see how we get on with the next one. That's Emil good. has a favorite map, but what is it? Oh. What is it? He's going to say a map that's released next year. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing meta guy. right now, you know? <laughs> okay, well, let's first start with the guess. Doom Bros, what did you go for? First gut feeling. Haven, he's gone with his gut. Is his gut correct? Yes. Oh, he shoots and he scores. <laughs> Wonderful yes. stuff. Look at this. On the same page. It's such a bad map, though. I, uh, it's a good map. Okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you've had this conversation before. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doom, this one is going to be a little bit more difficult. Perhaps it's a 50-50, which means he has to get it right. Phantom or Vandal? What would oh. Doom Bros say? Oh, That's a 50-50. It is. I'm making it easy, but it's a little harder to fail with these ones. Mm, I will fail with this one. All right. Okay. Let's see what Emil has said. Let's see the guess. Please be Vandal. Vandal. I can't believe this. Again, oh. not only is it right, you've both done an exclamation Wait, point. Wait, you actually did? Have you yeah. rehearsed no, this? No, no, no. That's actually, it's actually, actually going yeah. on? That, that's, that's creeping me out. Wait, sure. wait, yeah. like, I, he I'm actually did an exclamation. Yeah. I, I, I feel like the... Because I was you thinking... you got an earpiece in? No, What's no, happening no here? I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. uh, should I put something? I, I, I was thinking the same. Should I put the spider or something? Yeah, else? yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do it. Well, Make this more. is the twin telepathy was okay. uh, a quickly chosen name, but a very accurate by the looks of it. I've got a question then that moves away from from in-game stuff. Uh, this is sort of a theory you two grew up in Sweden together, right? So you've had quite a long time, uh, quite a lot of home cooked meals, mm. I would imagine. But of all of those, which one would you say is Doombro's favorite a meal? <clears throat> Sorry, I mean meal. Oh. My favorite meal. Your favorite home cooked meal. Home cooked meal. Home cooked. But I cook myself. Or your family, or family. growing up. Yeah. Uh, this one, I feel like you should know. I, I'm going off a feeling. A gut feeling. It's been working so far. All Let's right. see. I'm going to call it neck and neck up to this point because the, the first round there was some trickery. The favorite meal. Let's see if someone takes the cake. Let's see the answer. Carbonara. Carbonara. 
It's carbonara. Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> yes. Well, <laughs> it's good. But you did a dot and I didn't. So. Yeah, uh, actually. Finally, something separates you. Well, there's going to be something else separating you, and that is a result yeah. in the upcoming match. I have to wish you both the very best of luck, because right here, it's neck and neck as we yeah. close out this game show. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Thank you. That was absolutely awesome. And of course, we learned so much about our coaches. And 16 teams now are fighting for the title of world's best. And their road to the crown starts here. We have Team Liquid versus Navi. DRX taking on Loud. Day one of Valorant Champions Los Angeles starts right now. and they've gone where no other team have gone before. But if they want to call this a dynasty, an era... Do I pass it fast? Fnatic. First, the Tokyo Masters had a bit of a dramatic moment. I don't think there's any debates about it. Yeah. Everybody is in the best shape. Best sentinel in the world. Best flex player in the world. Kronika has three trophies. I'm dreaming of two, he has three. <laughs> but there is a most important tournament ahead of us, right? The dynasty, to be fully justified, they need to win champs. They have to win champs. For me, champs is more important than any masters. Every team have a chance to be remembered even more than Fnatic. And it, what's it, whereabouts is that? Is that where my hotel is, in there? Because we're winning Tokyo. We weren't fully comfortable, but actually we're almost there. We're, ideas were cooking. I think this event has to be the same. We're not going to win this event on this rooftop. I think when it comes to European playstyle, I think it's something that Asian teams are not used to. Eat, right? It's like they are good at punishing all this. Give the camera to nah, bro, nah. <laughs> Paper Rex, they are the fun team. They're the team that everybody loves to watch, but what is more fun than winning? Yeah, I mean, it's really nice to have like full team now. We had something, I think we are stronger. I have no doubt to him. <laughs> Me, you, Vic, had an insane year last year. Yeah. Should have won champs last year. Yeah. Well, they should have won, but yeah. redemption this year. Another squad that has shocked the world. This crew. 
They had no second chances at the start of this tournament. They've redefined, rewritten the history books. Ah, igual, bueno, después de tanto que estuvimos acá tanto tiempo, después del 0-9, boludo, estar acá ahora grabando esto, boludo, y estar en Champions, vamos.没有什么是完美的那种开放式结局才是最完美的多在几个国家补猛杯热血男主的剧情不就真正真正的带到了 Power 高兴我们先干掉巨人好吧然后再复仇一下 they can lose. They can lose. They, they, they can bleed. We're good at once. We were born to do this, guys. But let's not forget, we've never had a reigning world champion before. So Loud, they could also be the team that break a couple of records this year. I'd say our last game was pretty close. And uh, I think you want to get some revenge. Looking was good. Japan is really important. But after winning like one after another one, it's, it's kind of hard like keeping focus. We need one more, this is the important one. Champion is champions, you know, man. I'm really happy that you guys are succeeding and I want to rematch for sure, man. I'd say let's meet each other somewhere in playoffs. Let's have it, yeah. This year has been an absolute dream come true for all of us. One more! One more! Let's go! All right, uh, first of all, congratulations. It's champions, it's somehow already here. So congrats to you both on making it. Um, let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's kick it off. So TL, you are higher seed. Uh, team A or team B? So Navi, you'll be team A. And we will start with your first band. Your band. Pearl, okay, so bands are Haven and Pearl. Map number one. Fracture, side on fracture. Okay, and then map number two. Bind, side on bind. Defense, okay. Um, so we'll go with the next set of bands, starting with Navi. You have Ascent, Lotus, and Split. Band Lotus, okay. <laughs> Okay. 
Yes. Okay, so map number three will be split, Navi side on split. Okay? Okay. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through this, make sure we're both good to go. No, <laughs> uh, so <laughs> first set of bands, we have Haven and Pearl. Map number one is Fracture with TL on attack. Map number two is Bind with Navi on defense. Next set of bands were Lotus and Ascent. Map number three will be split with Navi on defense. Yeah, all right, good luck to you both. Their coaches have defined professional Valorant for what it is here in 2023. This is going to be an excellent matchup between two hungry teams, Mimi. Navi has always been considered the best or second best in EMEA. That was their title up until this year. Team Liquid beat them in EMEA, overtook them, won in that tournament. But now coming into this event, there's a chance to change that score, to flip things back in the favor of Navi in the tournament that matters most. Yeah, and like you said, GP, there was love right there at that hug. But man, these map meters tell me there is blood at stake right now because the picks, they're go they're both went into the weakness of the other team. Liquid has just been blown out in the recent fracture games. Navi, on the other hand, had got blown out on bind. I mean, they've looked very sketchy with Angel on the KO. I expect to see some comp changes. I mean, obviously out of Navi, but even out of Liquid throughout this series. And that's really the question surrounding Navi. What comps are they going to play? What is the Navi that's going to show up here at Champions? Is it the team that's still changing back and forth, making really strange decisions? Or will it be that Navi who finds their style, are hard to predict, and can be a contender for top spots? This is a team that has won Copenhagen, that has had so much success in their journey here in professional Valorant. And on the other side, Again, the same can be said for Liquid. These are two teams that have had very, you know, interesting stories here, up and down, but the ups have been, the, or the highs rather, have been incredibly high. So you, now you have to wonder, you know, who really wants it more when they walk into that server and start this game? Uh, I think we're going to find out pretty quickly on the pace Navi sets. I think they're going to want to get CNET a little bit more active than what he's been in his recent games. And I think we're going to see a lot of CNET going up against Safe throughout this series. We have Absolutely, Will. Those two players have defined their respective teams. But on map one here, which will be Fracture, I think this will be an interesting style clash. Because for Na'Vi, they were the first team, back when they were FPX last year, to start playing Viper Omen, to institute kind of a, a new idea here on Fracture. They've carried that through, and it's become super popular in EMEA. And Team Liquid have actually been playing a very similar composition to them as well. But the implementation has been nowhere near the level that Na'Vi has had. Yeah, and I I'm surprised Na'Vi has stuck with it for so long after the Omen nerfs to the one way is I think he got a little bit hindered on Fracture more so than any of the other maps. So the fact that Angel is still comfortable picking Omen on Fracture says a lot about their confidence in this comp. I am expecting Navi to stick to that comp. Liquid on the other hand, they've had a lot of time to pivot off of this. Yeah, well, we'll see the compositions come up here in a moment and there's your Prime Gaming Agent select. Okay. And I mean, yeah, Ooh. we're getting a lot of, of change-ups. I love this idea from Liquid. They're taking a page out of EG's book. We saw how good the ult combinations can be when you implement these Breach Sova compositions, but they have their own spin on it, playing that Neon instead, which I think has always been a super strong role for safe. It allows you to be super proactive with defensive side aggression, and it pairs really well with this double initiator comp. Yeah, and taking Nats off the Cypher, putting them on the Viper, I think that's a pretty good shout, given that, given that Navi has been running the raids. I mean, I think 
think they've made the right comp adjustment here. Navi, on the other hand, you know, that Neon is going to be breezing by the Killjoy Util. I don't think it's slowing her down at all. There's no Sentinel on the other side, so it has to be proactivity on this defense. If Navi can shut that down, I think they can get a big leg up in this one. Yeah, and we are ready, folks. Let's go ahead and make some noise, Shrine, as we get ready for our first match of the day. And what better way to kick it off than two fan favorite casters? You have Bren and Sideshow. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, excited to kick this one off here. Champs 2023, finally, Josh, an international event in North America. And we're setting the stage here with two EMEA teams <laughs> with plenty of parallels, plenty of, you know, listen, mischievous plays, risky plays all Very. over the bloody place, isn't it, with them? But I am excited to get this one started. I think it's the most unpredictable group that we have at Champions, and we're kicking things off straight into the pistol round with two IGLs that have got to be some of the most unpredictable, too. Team Liquid have gone for a really bizarre composition. And Solkas taking liberties over here on his own towards Arcade. Fast lane up, there's going to be a full line to the side. No but stun connecting. Great seize though onto Yampi. Yeah, and look at that. Yampi nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Dart a little bit late. Angel still tucked to the corner. Safety in numbers. The rest of his team helping to support him out here. Team Liquid forced to really adjust, set their sights onto a different goal maybe. So Sean was saying that the Neon is going to try and get past the Killjoy utility repeatedly. But here you see, they have more tools to be able to work with that. The Seize is going to be excellent to dealing with Yampi. And that's got to be something that he baits out early or tries to find a way around. Now, Team Liquid stalled out a little bit, but safe still with a ton of utility. And a cause made for a re-clearance right into the Maw. Team Liquid still holding, it's a triple face, Nats! He's claiming two, stun is beautiful! Nats! So cheeky with a three-piece. We're beginning after a rough start for the pistol. Let's see how it really gets going, though. Plan. We'll get it going. Still a fight to be taken by Na'Vi. It's really just trying to take tempo into their own hands, but that's the pistol round claimed. Off a huge play by Nats. Came into it with only a classic in his hand, and such patience demonstrated there, too, by Liquid, waiting for Na'Vi to peek into them. If you think about how both of these compositions are going to play on the defense side, Na'Vi should have more passive information. They have the Killjoy set up. They can be throwing out Haunts and Prowlers. Team Liquid, without the Killjoy, are going to have to be fighting and using that recon information constantly when the side swap. But for now, it was Na'Vi that got a little antsy and punished for it. All Sheriffs on the Na'Vi side. And both of these teams have been deadly in eco rounds across this year. Can I call into question that individual skill? Down. No, I, d I don't really think that that's been the issue with Na'Vi this year. It hasn't no. been the individual form of the players. It's been finding a team system that really works, compositions that fit them, and ways of putting their players in positions to succeed. That constant struggle to find their style. For Team Liquid, they clicked a little quicker. Oh, and face it away. It's a game of timings. Wall up, smokes propped up. Close to the corner is Angel. Does he suspect the reposition? Doesn't seem likely yet. Wades right into it. Aftershock on top. The stun. Sending it flying with the util as well. Looks like Team Liquid looking to try and clear this one. But again, too much emphasis being placed. Now through. Main choke point. Red guard. Nats landing it. The better weapons for the job. Navi being choked out of this one still. Reveal, I believe, Shao. Able to claim that one through the smoke. Zipan as well. This is getting potentially dangerous, but leave it just up to Shao. Not likely to win that one, not against the rifles. So they save Phantom the Bulldog here into round three. And Team Liquid have not been particularly successful at converting these bonuses. This one doesn't look like it's going to have too much behind it. Regar only bought a ghost in the prior round, so he could invest some of that economy and build it up but it's going to have to be fast and explosive for Team Liquid to carry this momentum forwards. Still, a much better start than the last time we saw Liquid on Fracture. The, the, the previous iteration, coming out at Tokyo, playing against EG, they got destroyed. This map pool, incredibly close between all of these teams. And Angel looks like he wants to fight really yeah, I mean, early on. This is might be seeing a classic Angel play. He wants to take the initiative for his team. There's a flash blinding them all up, Haunt. What's it back? It's, it's an excellent start. With. Great bolt from Yampi. It pushes everybody back from Na'Vi. And now they're looking to head into Solkas. Now, Solkas has been playing on his own here, arcade side, pretty much the entire time, all three of these rounds. That's he gets the punished. Of it. Yeah, that's the punish. If you get a read on that, 
it really doesn't seem like a safe place for Solcast to be holding. He doesn't have the ability to get out on the ropes, doesn't have too much utility to be able to hold on to either, and no support. You know, it's not like playing a Killjoy on the north side where your turret gives you information if there's a crunch going on, yeah. or, you know, it's some way of escaping, for example, if you're playing Chamber or something like that. It was made here for Liquid. Redguard trying to fake some presence over towards B with the hit. dart and the drone. I can feel like... Again, a lot of attention is placed there, but nobody's given up their positioning right now to hold it down at Sagetsu. Fast lane in his face. Ripping all the way through, can't deal with the turret. Still a lot of angles to watch for. Sagetsu, yep, caught so unaware. Trousers down by his ankle, still seen it. The back of the site got an anchor, it cannot adjust the aim in time. Welcome to Liquid. My world. Finding their space now with a pit down as well as looking all, but likely that they just steal away the round. It's a scramble from Na'Vi, desperate to try and get in. All down to Shao in a 1v3. Does he anticipate Red Guy behind? Yes, the adjustment's there. Fine. Works, still got the haunt as well. No reveals. So difficult to get a reveal in the pit. Yeah. What a difficult task. The K kicking in lower and lower. And yeah, single blow bullet will do it at a crossfire setup. Plenty of safety there. This is Team Liquid. Really setting the tone, I think, of this map here. Like you're saying, Josh, you know, they've changed up quite a bit with their compositions, but. Winning the bonus round, keeping it going. And they came into the bonus with almost no equipment. And it's Nats and Yampi who are just carrying this map for Liquid so far. On top of that, major mistakes from Sugetsu. It's an interesting wall setup that he was using over towards the A site. And he's gone for it again here in the next round. But he was just caught wide out in the open. Had no way of really dealing with the neon fast wall in his face. Pools made to try and push out here. Yampi. Okay, off of his contact. There's a fault line and a flash into the corner. Will collect the one kill. Plenty more players waiting, though, to receive. And yet, yeah, he's diligent with it. Checking the right corners. And all that map control gain. There is a push out from Na'Vi on the north side of the map. And look, they seem to be ready for it. There's two players holding that direction already. Almost expecting. And this is the way the Na'Vi like to play. If they're pushed on defense like this, Zipan and Angel are going to try to flank. I mean, <laughs> Sean was forced to break down a version of that play, actually, <laughs> where Angel went for a bit of an ambitious TP. Yeah. But Team Liquid look like they're ready for it. And you've got to remember, this is going to be a battle where both teams are familiar with the other's play style. And now it's all down to Angel and Zipan coming through on Dish. And Soulcast has already spotted them. He can just back up and play with the rest. Purposefully not planting the spike. Maybe to farm some orbs or what? I'm not too sure, but they're collecting the kills anyway, and now they get the plant down. <laughs> I mean, there. yeah, Instant. even the ace. ace. Well, that's going to boost up the energy and the confidence. Team Liquid are a very momentum-based team. They constantly talk about it, bringing energy into the matches, feeling like they're putting their best out on the server. And when Yampi's 9-1 and one coming off the back of an ace, sure, it's an anti-eco. You know, he's not facing the most stiff resistance in the world. But even before this, he was still 4-1 winning massive duels for his team and helping them get into good spots on the bonus round. <laughs> That's how you know things are going well for Liquid. Feeling good. Red Guard very close to his ultimate here. We'll see if Team Liquid have any ult plays cooked up. This is one of the major powers of the Breach Sober compositions, but Yampi's just sending it. Yeah, all the way through as well in the bullets. The damage. Cannonated on top there with the Nana Swarms. I think they could have come up with a better strategy there. Yeah, it was very all in. Another first kill going away now, but they haven't been able to convert the rounds after it. It's Team Liquid. Still Solkas on his own towards Arcade, now getting reinforcements from safe. There was an opportunity for CNED to duel him, but he didn't take it. Chose the more safe of the options. Okay. They're gathering up here. Redgar's still not really playing for the orb, not playing for any kind of Hunter's Fury idea in this round. There's danger in this as well. The more you tick the clock down, that showstopper in the back pocket of Zipan becomes a round-winning ult. But recall what Na'Vi did on the pistol. Same kind of situation as this. Team Liquid cut noise and Na'Vi peeked into them. Going for information, got punished. 30 seconds left. Let's get through the jiggle there. I think he did see something. Angel had to let the paranoia fly as well. There is that trade, Zipan. He's quick with it. Now the showstopper let loose on top of the staircase. And Yemi finds his mark. This time, Team Liquid not able to battle back. The crack into that defense. Na'Vi were very prepared. 
But let's talk about the ults a little here. Mimi was saying that these Sova Breach compositions can be excellent on Fracture, and they can. And we've seen that Evil Geniuses cook up tons of different ultimate plays to carry the momentum forwards and win rounds just like this one. But here, you don't have the Brim Ultimate, you don't have the Killjoy Lockdown, you don't have the Showstopper, all massive tools that Evil Geniuses usually uses to be able to carry their momentum forwards. If you have a Sova that's one away from getting his Hunter's Fury online, I think that's got to be the priority. And that maybe can be a gap that Na'Vi can exploit. If Team Liquid haven't done the prep into cooking these big ult combos up, maybe Na'Vi will get some easier rounds here. This is a bread and butter move. The Na'Vi composition, the one-way smoke, a bit of a prowler to set them up on a line. It gives them that A-Hall's control, but they've given up drop as a result of it. Let's put their attention towards it. Three players grouped up, and I believe that's a stun being held. Yeah, along with the dart. This is a definitely a set play. Hunter's Fury right from the spawn, and all the kills being collected. Combined up, beautiful turn of events right when they needed it. That is absolutely wonderful. Choosing to invest it here in round six rather than round five, but Regar had the perfect angle to catch those players as they went back into sight. That was wonderfully done. And a split with a Hunter's Fury that was excellent for Yampi to be able to capitalize on. So, just as I was having doubts about whether Team Liquid had done their prep work on the attack side, they come out with that one. And now they're starting to build up to a Breach Ultimate as well. Things that can keep Na'Vi constantly on the back foot. Remember, this is Na'Vi's map pick. It's probably their second best map. The way that the vetoes went, Team Liquid got rid of Pearl, which Na'Vi have been incredible at. That's why Na'Vi have brought them here to Fracture. Well, still close to the corner. Trying to hunt down these kills to get to. He's holding his ground. Still, the aim is sharp, isn't it? Good form towards the end of the round. We'll do some economic damage, but still enough money to buy. It feels like, yeah, in the back pocket, plenty of it for Team Liquid. Look at how well-coordinated it is. And look at the angle. I mean, as Zipan is caught in the corner, it also catches Zhao, who's trying to escape into sight. The reaction from Safe is exactly what I'm thinking too. That was very clean. And Na'Vi take a timeout. Bren, I thought it was so interesting listening to the press conference before Champions began. Much has been made of Emil going up against Doombros, the two identical twins battling. But one of the things I found to be most incredible is that they said whenever a tactical timeout is taken like this, they can almost tell exactly what the other brother is going to be saying to the team. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are physiologically identical, and they've yeah. also gone down almost the exact same career pathway, coaching a Valorant team, finding themselves in this kind of spot. They just know what the other's thinking, and it makes these tactical timeouts such a mind game. They were saying they often have to ignore what their first impetus would be and go to plan B or plan C of how they would adjust things just to try and win the mind game over their opponent. The, <laughs> this is not just a matchup of two EMEA teams that know each other really well. It's a battle of two IGLs that have a ton of experience, the two brothers in the coaching slot that whenever they have input have to second guess everything. Yeah. Secondary plans. Plans on plans as well and actions, just in case the other side is going to predict what you're going to do. And Navi have swapped things up here. They've completely rotated the Killjoy to the other side of the map. So Viper Killjoy playing on A. The more info-finding aggressive component of the Raze Fade and Angel fighting Arcade. Yeah. Dark Flash stun all combined. Try and net them some early control towards Arcade. It was a nade that pushed them back, but... Do have that ground, now the drone, a little bit further, Angel, tagged. Not only open, but skips across back to safety, and there's a pit laid down in a hall. lots of ults online for Na'Vi. So Getsu presumably putting that down because Nats made some noise over here. We're going to have a Viper standoff where Nats is not favoured. Going to have to creep through a pit if he wants to create any space on this side of the map. So for Team Liquid, it looks like another slow round that's just this pinch on B. These have gone well when Na'Vi have peeked into them, but otherwise Team Liquid don't seem to have that ability to get into the site. Perhaps the Breach Hell can make the difference here. Time running short, down to 40 seconds. This Viper's Pit again, it just pushes Team Liquid into the B site. Should be expecting this one. Zipan still has to watch multiple angles, and here's a Nightfall. In response there. Breach ult going 
Straight wide into their spawn as well, just trying to take the fight straight to them as well. It's going to have to be containment on various areas of the map. Onto the site, Zipan falls though. Solkas now with a late uh, lurk and not expecting that angle. Xiao from behind the box just popping out, out in the open. Heads on a swivel, Team Liquid. Caught so damn unaware, Redguard still wins his fight out, and Yampi looking as well to get that backstab attempt. Xiao still alive, but it is just left up to Yampi. It's a 1v2, very wide swing, Xiao. Still alive, nine bullets, make it seven. Has to skip across and try and deny it. Yeah, immaculately played by Xiao and Seget to always safe pair of hands in that scenario. There it is, Emil's favorite skin. <laughs> uh, Team Liquid's slow attacks into B have just simply not been successful. They're not able to get the same value. And here's what happened over towards Halls. Nats caught CNED, who was trying to push out through the pit and meet up with the rest of the players on B, and it just ended up being a one-for-one -one trade when Nats was essentially out of the fight the entire time. So Na'Vi have another in very similar fashion to how they got round five. They're going to look to try and take some tree control as everybody on Liquid sets up for an A split. On either side of the map there, there's not going to be any contact. Look at that recon players. dart too that Redgar's throwing. It's all the way from the south side, and it lands to clear out Dish. It's cheeky. Clearly a lot of prep work been put in here. This rotate though is incredibly early from Na'Vi. Already stacking, aren't they? The exception of just Xiao. Red guys droning out towards B main, maybe just making it feel like they could be pushing if there was players there. But no, Na'Vi are stacking this and Team Liquid, do they still choose to pull the trigger? Yeah, there's the stuns coming through. Gliding down, but Yampi's caught in between two players. Nats now left to try and Maybe do some work here. He slipped himself wow. into the back lines, through the ropes, and ships in the night. This is, is there so any steep. expectation here? Xiao still looking the other way. Angel, Utilin his hands zip onto the sides. Doesn't expect it. The comms going to miss. Leads things in the 2v3. Team Liquid still have Safe and Soulcast and Astro Wall potentially to get out onto a site somewhere. As Xiao still feels like he needs to commit to the B site. They don't exactly know where these Team Liquid left. players are, but the time. Team Liquid's worst enemy. It's working against them. Gotta get a move on here. Cosmic Divide. It's gonna split up the site. A bit more palpable, potentially. Flash into the corner. Cena though not caught by it! And look at the transfer. Even if he wasn't good for it. The rest of his team, hot on the trail. Able to put a stop to it. Some of that momentum definitely petering out here for Liquid after an explosive start. You still have Yampi and Nats up at the top of the scoreboard. But Yampi is getting caught on more of these entries. You see the adaptation from Na'Vi. As soon as the fast lane went down, for Yampi to get into sight, two of the Na'Vi players jumped into it. They bloomed the smoke, ran inside the fast lane to catch Yampi. They are putting a lot of resources into shutting down this Neon early, and there isn't enough support. Same play again here, same recon dart. The orb to take a little bit of Hall's control. And Na'Vi... Look like they're recognizing it. Angel and Zipan are fast out through the north side, and red pings light the map up. Onto the north side, yeah. Liquid, no. It's been called, expected now. And Liquid seeking to contain, seeking to get that information. But the cross says just not good. Angel's made to look like an absolute bloody genius. Impeccable form, even with him falling. The space has been created, and the spike is dropped in the middle of nowhere. This one is going to be an almost impossibility for Redgar and Nats to recover. Everybody on Na'Vi controlling that area. The drone, I mean, <laughs> it clears a part of the map that Na'Vi have no interest in standing in. Those are the kind of moments where you have these IGLs, Angel playing against Red Guard. Both of them love making aggressive, hard reads of their opponent. There's going to be wild plays where sometimes they look like they have a need to feed. But in certain spots like this, they can pull out the exact play that they need to. The X Factor for either team. Left. For Redgar and Nats here, I think they'd love to save these weapons necessary, but also if they could get some kind of ult orb, I mean, even with a, a kill or a death, they're going to be able to have ults up for the next round. They don't need to prioritize that too much. A lot of these orbs are attacker sided. But this Ten next round is going to be left. a very important one. Only Soulcast right. without the ability to buy. Maybe the rifles will make a difference. 
But this is Na'Vi, string arounds now, almost dragging it even. One more round will do it. And yeah, Hinchel. I mean, again, the aggression is there, isn't it, from him? Doesn't shy away from it. When he has an idea and a read on the map, what's going on? He's always going to be the first one to take that contact. This is where we're really starting to see how deep does that Team Liquid playbook run. It's a new composition. What else have they cooked up? Because the idea is starting to run dry ever so slightly. A preparation in order with this one. Dart down to the side, making it feel like, again, that A presence. But this time, it's Team Liquid trying to work over towards Arcade. They don't have tree control. And previously, this haunt has not really been followed up. So Team Liquid may disrespect it. Red Guy's using his drone over towards Halls instead of using that to reclear trees. So Angel's got himself in a spot where he may well get value. And even if he does get pushed, punished, he has his ultimate to be able to escape. Oh. Great awareness from Yampi, checking the high ground there for Zipan. And is that the opening that they were hunting for? Well, that and more. Of Angel falling, 3v5. Has to be heroics and shout, he can't do it. Opting now into the retake. I mean, seeing it with the operator in his hands, not a chance in hell. Not going to be doing that with a player disadvantage. Have to get out of there and save. So, well set up round from Team Liquid. It is, but almost in some sense, just a slow contacting and clearing out the players from Na'Vi who are in spots that, you know, were a little more dangerous. You can't really say that about Zipan. Holding on top of Generator, very common, but also great awareness, I think, from the other side of things for Team Liquid to have crosshair placement trained in that specific spot. It's often an area that ends up catching people out. And I think one of the reasons that they can afford to do that is that there just hasn't been aggression coming from Tower. When CNED's been playing in that spot, he's been playing passively, holed up inside Tower, not looking for aggressive swings. So they're not worried about it as they get through Arcade. They can only focus on one of those angles. Speaking of CNED, you know, he's had this lockdown for a long time. We saw him recently make the move over to Killjoy, and I think he's still adapting, picking up the operator now. And he's kind of playing hard anchor, which hasn't given him many opportunities to use the lockdown in some kind of retake setup. So they're, they're missing the value that that ultimate could provide as we head deep here into this first half. Well, it's just been wait <laughs> waiting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so a steady lead being held in game by Team Liquid, but here we go. There's a response. Yuto being used, and they are backed all the way out of there. The showstoppers. Just pulled out of Zipan, close to the corner, but no value at all. It's a full evacuation, Team Liquid, but right into the operator this time. That's getting caught on the lurk, but still that arcade control is Liquid's. This is going to make things very difficult for CNED, right? They want to try and maintain some level of presence over towards the site, but Team Liquid have arcade control. They're trying to get up into tower at the moment, too. Thankfully, CNED does actually have that alarm bot that tells him if people are trying to get deep into tower onto site. So it gives him and Chow just a little bit of safety as Team Liquid back off from B. Regrouping with their IGL, who's taken horse control. Looking like they wanted to go towards A, but no. Oh, they're gonna guessing it. Yeah, committing over towards it again. Red car faking the presence of the drone. It's been a regular theme so far. This attack side of Team Liquid. But it's not pulling Can't many of these players yet. away. Some of them are starting to move away. Seen it. It's doesn't so know if they crossed. It's all over the place, isn't it? I mean, CNET doesn't know if they're in tower right now, too. With I the mean, operator out in the open, I mean, he's got nowhere to run, nowhere too high. He's got to back away and pray that his team have his back. There's the shot landed. Flashes not connecting. And Sean pushing right through the smoke, catching every single player that might be lurking and trying to put a stop to it. What a round by CNET with his off. Put in really uncomfortable spots and delivered every time he was asked to take a shot. I think that's been one of the biggest issues, actually, with Na'Vi this year, is trying to put CNED in positions where he's comfortable. Spike and down. here, I'm not sure that in terms of his positioning, he particularly was, but he's got so much skill. His ability to read where his opponents were coming from in that situation, immaculate too. He doesn't need the lockdown. Save it for round 12. Revealing <laughs> area. Now Redgar has the Hunter's Fury as well, so there is a counter available as we head into the final round of this half. 
And Na'Vi have been constantly exploring. Angel has kept them very proactive on the defensive side. And if Solcast tries to take space in Arcade, there. he is going to be met with resistance once more. He evacuates. Yeah, across the ropes this time. Doesn't want to get caught out. Regrouping with the rest of them. Still that tree control is theirs. In tunnel as well. Looks like that's where... Can't be setting his sights, but that is being watched as well. If he decides to push deep into it, Angel has got his rifle locked onto it. So safe, so slow. That's what you come to expect from some of these teams. This time the drone coming in. Actually, is a lot of players behind this one. The Haunt is good, though. That's going to be a tag on oh. the one. What a kill. Right onto Yampi. Falling Thunder sent flying. Viper's fit into the show. Hunter's Fury. They are chucking the kitchen sink at this. But are they going to be able to get through? Still time. 30 seconds left. Have to see that plan coming down for the extension. But just following the Prowlers. Right to the prize. Zipan is collecting. This guy's an absolute monster, but finally shut down. That's taking matters into his own hands. 20 seconds left. Spike. He's grabbed it. There's a player watching. And the lockdown finally getting that value. It's all up to Redguard. Not a chance. And Navi tires up at 6 6 in the first half of Champions 2023. It's a tight game, a close one, a slow one, too. And a bit bizarre. If you thought this was going to be defined by the big battle of safe against CNED, it hasn't quite gone that way. <laughs> with that being a breach v killjoy matchup. But the. First quarter dominated oh. by Yampi and Nats until Na'Vi found a way to respond. Yeah, that was a lot. Show was saying a slower game, right? Like, yeah. you know, this is uh, what we've come to expect. And it wasn't defined by flashy plays, but you can tell that once the compositions were locked in, it felt like that's when the wheels started to turn here and everyone's really trying to, like, game plan against how do you stop the Neon? How do you get value from the Neon? Lots of cool things we saw, at the very least. For Team Liquid, I think this was defined by their composition. And the question was, what do they have cooked up? Do they have those same alt combos that were so good for EG? And they had rounds, like in round six in particular. I think they did a really good job on this execute. You. Especially since it's Yampi playing the Neon. This is an unusual yeah. agent for him, but I think they combined it really well, using the Neon to distract those relay bolts to hold people in place with that dart to then go out and use the Sova ultimate. But the thing was, it wasn't these rounds that defined the half. It wasn't like EG where it's alt combo upon alt combo. It really, I think, came down to the mid rounding a lot for TL, where Navi was winning in these late rounds. I, I, I agree completely. I think if Navi went back and look at this, looks at this map and how it started, it is eerily similar to what their LCQ run looked like. They got first bloods on their, their opening pest round and the bonus, and they couldn't convert those rounds. Those are massive swing rounds in that half, and I think without that, Navi wins this half convincingly. That said, I want to give Liquid their flowers like you just did. I love the set plays coming between the Neon, the Sova, and the Breach. I thought the combination, combination of the util was perfect. For Navi in that first half, it was interesting because it was almost always Angel being the proactive player, yeah. taking yes. space. It was never zip in. I expect that to change in this half. And for Na'Vi, I think it's a question of how do you deny this Neon space? Because Liquid, with double initiative Neon, is going to want to be really aggressive on the extremities, pushing forward with a dart, a stun, and that Neon combining. Yeah, that is really, uh, you know, we're going to see how this plays out. But what we've gotten so far, a closely contested matchup between two teams that are so familiar with one another. But let's go ahead and send it right back over to Brennan's Sideshow and take us through this second half. We said this was going to be a game of parity. You think about the identical twin head coaches, you know, the <laughs> IGL Omen players that love to make the risky plays. And uh, yeah, 6 6 half is what we're staring at. The issue here, though, for Team Liquid is that Na'Vi, in my opinion, are a lot better on the attack side of this map than they are on the defense. I'm not sure that necessarily bears out in the stats, but I think that they tend to come in with better ideas. I think the slow pace on their attack side is the way that Angel likes to call and the way that players like Sigetsu and Xiao like to play. Have a play being set up though. Some form of utility. There's a fault line. Double swing, double face. Zipan not favored. He was alone in that. Not at all. That's a really ambitious refight by Zipan. He knows that there's going to be multiple people there supported by breach utility. With that first kill, Team Liquid advantage. Still not a lot of information because, yeah, Nats. What a timing to be taken by Navi. Immediately evened out. Gained access to the site. Should be a free plan for them. B main control. Also held. 
still giving time for Team Liquid to rotate. Yeah, where where is this spike where, going? What is the call here? The call to push into spawn. This is a complete adaptation. Redguard could be an absolute hero here to stun, to capitalize. Redguard heard it all. And the util is good. It's fantastic. It's still coverage as they hit the spot. Oh, <laughs> what am I watching? It's anarchy. That's the spike again. Two versus two. Safe has it knocked down right by his feet. Picked up, though. And so, which way does this go? I mean, the smoke's still covering their exits, but again, tip top, it's just pure RNG. Oh my god. Safe finding value there, but that was also Solkas' smoke that even allowed Sagetsu to escape in the first place. Can Shao win this? What? what is that headshot? I mean, basically, full run is what it felt like now. Time left as well to get this plant down, but he is low. But with the extension, him versus Safe. Ghost in either hand. Needs to be a shot to the head, he takes him. The shot goes wide, stun. Missing, doesn't hit it though. It's safe with three to finish. What? And a pistol round for Team Liquid, man. That is a pistol round for the ages. <laughs> That's an unbelievable one. What an audible to call from Angel there. And I think that's been another theme, actually, of Na'Vi throughout this year, is overcooking situations like that just a tad. You could see the idea. You can definitely see what he's going for there. And there's only Redgar holding him back. The issue is, when Safe has a fault line into spawn and you're all running single file into Redgar, that fault line connected on everybody and it just stalled the entire pivot. Madness, though. Absolute madness that puts Team Liquid up 7-6. <laughs> the reaction in the Netherlands, the same as mine here. <laughs> You're going to get disbelief at times when you watch these two teams. For better or for worse. Everybody on Na'Vi flooding through Arcade right now. Prioritizing orbs onto CNET. Makes sense, the lockdown. Massive tool. Although Xiao is technically closer to another big ultimate in the Nightfall. Making sure they prioritize the ults in either areas. What's available to them on Fracture? Maybe even getting a cheeky kill here, but... With how slowly, Brent, that Na'Vi like to play on their attack side, I think Team Liquid is going to find it very difficult to get information. Yeah, they still have the Sova Dart and they have a drone to work with, but apart from that, they have no passive info coming from a Killjoy or a Cypher or anything like that. Blocking They're going to need to be pushing and info peeking a lot. And that offers opportunities for Na'Vi to punish. Is he here again, Solkas? Forced to give up a horse control because he's worried about Dish. Yeah, they can't so watch worried. both areas at once. Well, he's backed all the way just to the default spot, and yet he knows. And now he can hear it. The footsteps coming his way. Paranoia, that's a connection. Nade towards his feet, but that is a great dart. Sets it up. And bogs him down with the aftershock. Laying all the util straight into the choke point. Fire in range for Solkast. Get the confidence online, son. Easy pickings on the anti-eco. That's what you need to see. And Redgar saving that recon dart to be able to support Solkast in his job anchoring the site instead of using it for information. Something to keep an eye on as we head deeper into this. Team Liquid with a much better bonus round by this time in the second half. And they were still able to convert in round three. So how does this look? That should work. They're gonna fight into tree. This looks Getsu, all in. Yeah, so Getsu seems to be there to meet them, but no, just backing away from this one. A lot of util being used, dumped right into tree. Taking control of it. That's an ult online, an important one. Rolling how, thunder now, and well. Look how deep Angel already is. An insane shot to hit, yet Angel vacuumed up the space that's offered to him. Aftershock is a little bit too delayed, and he's found a second. The timings that Angel finds are so feast or famine. They're taking that 1v1, but finding the timing, finding the opportunity, and winning the duel against Yampi. The question is, the Team Liquid still want to try and commit to using ultimates against this one plant. It's being stuck. Nothing used to dissuade it. I don't think you do, Brandon. Yeah, not in this instance. I think the Rolling Thunder is just too much of an investment. This is a bonus round. You want to damage the economy of Na'Vi, but their post plant positioning is going to be fantastic here. They control Tree and Arcade. A Breach Hell just can't hit everybody. They'll make a go of it. Fault line being held. If you get a couple of picks, of course, that whole situation changes. There it is. Attempt from that maybe to just swing off that stun. Not really working out. Full control, and again, yeah, just trying to play the exits. Take away the guns if you can. Evacuation once more from Na'Vi. 
Bullets attacking, slowing them down, but it looks like everybody's going to be able to get away safely. And Safe and Solcast throw themselves into the moor. An extremely gentle bonus round, especially compared to what we saw in round three. Navi escaped completely unscathed. All rifles maintained. When Zipan gets going, and if Angel's hitting entries too, this attack site could be very difficult for Liquid to deal with. They have the lead for the moment. Redgar is picking up the Sova Operator. <laughs> okay. You always know there's going to be something when yep. Angel and Redgar are on the field, but I didn't think we were going to see this. Not going to anticipate it, are you? Great tool to stop the contact plays, but what do you do when there's a smoke in your face? Not much. It's got to be the reposition. Well, famously, Bren, the Sova has really good tools to be able to disengage <laughs> if you get caught out of position. So, you know, he could take a more aggressive angle. Uh-huh. Guy's just lying, spreading misinformation over the internet. CNED's one away from his ultimate. That's, that's a fact. You can, you can take that to the back. <laughs> so he's going to pick up the orb at the moment. Probably head back into tunnel and go for this. Now, Redgar's going to be forced to play. Retake with an operator. Yeah, there's no big odds to try and push this one back, is it? Or is he? I mean, Redgar's going the opposite way. Anchoring onto the side, you really just have to get out of here. He's what got the is... shock dart lineups and the aftershock as well. Yep. Is the Uto good? No, it misses, it's not. man. It misses. Two players detained. Not a chance. There it is, that's the gambit that Team Liquid went for. I didn't even spot exactly where those shock darts ended up landing, but there is a bit of variability in terms of where you can put the lockdown in tunnel and still get value. Yeah, the round has gone to pot. I, I think it might have just been the smokes in the face. I think you, whatever he's lining that up off, he might just need some part of the wall to fire it off of or what. I don't, I'm yeah, not too sure, but... It's, it's a great point. I mean, I don't play Sova on Fracture. So <laughs> <laughs> not many people do. So I'm, I'm unsure exactly what the lineup is there, but clearly Redgar going for it and it not quite landing. So that's given Na'Vi another incredibly clean round. This economy is going to be through the roof. All of these players getting an extra 3K at the end of this for the one round. Yeah. And the suppression on the side of Team Liquid, exactly the opposite. Na'Vi are now in the ascendancy. They're hunting out this gun, though. Take it out of safe hands. Paranoia does miss, but yeah. Out into the open. Zipan plucking him. So 8-8, eight to eight, it's evened up. As we're expecting, and another timeout now going to be called here by Team Liquid. We've seen things from Shah's perspective here in the replay. Just easiest cleanup for Na'Vi. So we're heading into a tactical timeout here by Team Liquid as well, as they try to reassess what the situation is. They're going into an eco for the next, so this one really about how they're going to adapt in round 18 once they have guns back available. One of the big things that Team Liquid was talking about coming into this tournament was focusing on their discipline and cohesion. Emil said in the past as a coach, he has allowed his team to have a lot of freedom. If they want to overpeak sometimes, if that's something that they're doing because they're confident, he'll let them. He doesn't want to keep them too closely leashed. But in the run-up here to Champions, he's tried to create a more cohesive liquid, a more disciplined liquid. A Red Garon Operator liquid. <laughs> Yeah, I was rolling back the rounds in my head and I was like, I'm not really seeing as much evidence of this, but listen. I mean, I, I do feel like that's what they're aiming for with this kind of composition. They're, they're having, you know, it be, be based on very set utility being thrown by Red Garen safe. Yeah. Uh, Soul Class, Soul Cast has been extremely disciplined in terms of the areas of the map that he's been taking, although I think he's been a bit too alone on his attack side. The question for me is really how they deal with Na'Vi. Now, let's take a look at this. Now, where did the shocks Yeah, land? shocks were nowhere near, were they? Oh, there they are. You just see them to the left of the screen. I mean, maybe being placed for a different position of the lockdown, but and it's possibly a, it's one just a little heavy. Like, I mean, just a massive gamble, right, to just anchor onto the site. Yeah, you have to be extremely confident those lineups are going to land, and it didn't. Knock the money down, so. Go. Na'Vi, lots of chances here. Risks. Needs to be taken. That's why you're seeing that. Fault line push out. Defensive aggression onto the north side of the map here by Team Liquid. Nobody ready to punish. And I'm not sure that Angel even got the information that the north side has been compromised. The Navi players left very early on. 
Could end up with a round coming down to guesswork, but look at this, fully stacked up. Team Liquid now actually running all the way to A. With Na'Vi also grouped up, not willing to give away any advantages. They want to be playing together nice and tight so that they can trade. 55 seconds on the clock, Redguard got the recon dart back. So he's got that available to try and They are grouped up, yeah, Team Liquid. They have presence, they have bodies here. It's about hitting the shots at this point. Lovely recon. There's the punish with a fault line. Yeah, the stun. Listen, it was good. Supportive utility there, but still Angel Man. Ripping them apart, isn't he, with the rifles? She can't quite get it done with the sheriffs. Nats has picked up a vandal here. If there was going to be anybody to make this round winnable, it could be him. It's not in the open. Door opening. Caught on the rope. Yeah, to get to. Taking him out here. Just min maxing, making sure that they can prioritize. Still with 10, 10 seconds, seconds left. left. It's the plant. No chance for Solkas here. They know his positioning. I mean, he'd have to toggle, basically, <laughs> the big stage to <laughs> pull anything like this off. Yeah, it's not a possible situation for him, but it's, it's more about, if you can, trying to put a bit of suppression on the Na'Vi economy, because it's currently out of control. You look at Sugetsu, Cned, Zipan, these guys are going to have almost max money. Ooh. That's a good one. Make Zipan have to rebuy the rifle. These kind of things could end up being important if both teams are able to put more rounds on the board and we head deeper and deeper in this map. Need to see some more ideas though now from Team Liquid. I was there half by a round, they're going to have rifles on board for the next. But the lead has been taken by Na'Vi. This is where they really do just have a chokehold on this map, their map pick. It looked like early on Team Liquid had a very good read. I think that first half they had plenty of fantastic ideas. We saw the big ult dump on that one round where they punished the A-holes the Na'Vi like to play on the defense side. So there were clear ideas in counter stratting at play, but this is, this is going to be ridiculous, Ben. We've got Yampi with the Neon Operator trying to peek into at least two of the players that are on Na'Vi trying to and take Zipan, right? Yeah. Close to the corner here, stuns are there. Angels TP'd in front. It's a great position to TP to, actually. You get such a wide swing. Oh, yeah. up, and you just don't expect it. It's so unorthodox, man. Any potential timing, he made no noise whatsoever. And look at it, slipped his way into the side dart. Just about getting that tag onto the one. So cast, that is just instinct on display. Shots rattled off through the choke point. Na'Vi finding it difficult now to try and get Bit of a breather in the round. Their players are very weak. And still that breach shot. Safe. He's holding on to it with these kills that he's landing. He's just through the smokes. With the spam, might even get another one. There it is. No fair fight. Both of those players had a combined 51 health between them, taken down by spam through the smoke. It's just all the chip damage adding up over time. Last player standing. Giving them the fights now to see it. But again, what a task he's got. Sidestep a straight to avoid the stun. A wider face once more, but no, with three players against him. There's that discipline being showed. And again, even. You take a look at the replay here, though. One of the big issues is that Na'Vi are too predictable on their timings of when they're committing to the site. They, they go for it. A big round here. You know, utilizing the nightfall, getting into the site, but one of my major issues is while they're up 5v4 and they've been very good at being able to get those attacking first kills all this year, they immediately pivot into a sight hit every time. And that makes it too predictable. We have an op v op battle happening here, although Cnid is on the other side. Yampi doesn't stand. like the look of it, he runs away instantly. Yeah. Maybe a bit of conditioning, but they give up that space. Nice and early, Yampi sets himself up. Team Liquid's composition oh, has to no. fight, not Angel He again. sees the barrel, he sees the barrel. <gasps> Misses the chance though. So ah. close. Cover going out. That is dancing with death for Yampi. He's trying to work on that internal clock of when the team could have worked their way under through tunnel without making a footstep. And to be fair to him, he was perfect. <laughs> Just Couldn't have spent another it. half second there. Yeah. Peeking off the recon. Broken. Only the one shot though going wide. And a lot of noise being made. 
Navi trying to hide their presence, make it difficult to tell which site they're going to be landing on. I love this smoke as well from Angel. It's obscured the sight line from Yampi. These players over by B are going to be looking for information, but they've made the right read. There's three on A, and that's where the spike is heading with 30, 30 seconds. seconds. Yeah, and with left. no time, safe in position with the Rolling Thunder. This just feels like a, a lost round almost instantly. The time scale that they've been trying to play this one, a haunt into the back of the side. The Rolling Thunder's being used preemptively to try and bog out these players. 17 seconds left. Everybody pushed and corralled to close quarters here. Cosmic Divide just. Again, there's no time. Pushed right in front of them. Angel is right behind enemy lines and he can't win these fights Bunny out. Six seconds left. There has to be the spike being planted. Is there time? I believe so. And still, they're holding it down. Oh. All the sidelines there. The shots are landing. It's up to Sokas and Yampi. Yampi's going to be able to exchange the operator for a rifle, so he does still have a chance. Stun would be good. This. He's trying to isolate one of the fights here, but it's so damn difficult. It's a high-low setup. Drop control still there. C Ned watching it with the op. Here's the ult. Showstopper against the wall. Damage done, but no kill netted. Distraction play from Solkos, but again, it's ticking. The spike down and down. Time available, not there. This just felt like an impossible round to win for Navi, yet somehow, somewhere, they pulled it out. <laughs> and I don't know how. They had 10 seconds on the clock. Angel was the only player that Ullman ulted into sight. They still had Nats on the high ground of A to deal with, and they bullied their way through all of that defensive utility and managed to get a plant down. Ten seconds That's left. a ridiculous round. Yeah, look at this. Ten seconds left. Right down to the wire. That's Just that's trading people out excellently a. on this slow siege. A second to spare when the plant's going down there. I can't believe it. There's so many things that could have gone wrong in that situation. Yep. One player in a spot to be able to drop the player with the spike, and it could have all been over. Yeah, pain. Yeah, and that's what it means. These are the small moments, the delicate things that can mean the difference between a win and a loss. And look at this group up. Players are meeting them pound for pound. Zipan! Oh, the man with the plan. What is that? Maybe not so, still. I mean, that is just... He's just jiggling left and yep. right. AD, AD. Tapping people while he's in the dead zone. What Fantastic is that? Fantastic movement. When Zipan's on raise, anything is winnable. That's another thing that Na'Vi have shifted heading into Champions. CNED occasionally taking a bit more of a back seat for Zipan to play the solo duelist. Rather than experimenting with the, those uh, Yoru Fade compositions <laughs> that everyone, everyone loved from Na'Vi. So lock that away. Do not bring that out. But Zipan's been absolutely magical on Raze. Yeah. He's constantly putting up huge performances for the team. It's definitely put, that comfort role. Yeah, this has put Liquid in a really horrible spot again. Like they, they forced into this round with a Guardian, some scraps, odds and ends. There's no chance of reclaiming a rifle as well. They are grouped up. They're saving this Guardian. Doesn't feel nice. I mean, these players could easily get pinched and lose what little they already they have. They already are being pinched. Position is known here. Just got to find the angles in time. It's all up to Nats. And he won't survive. Na'Vi. It's 11 to 9. The bank is booming. Plenty of money still. Team Liquid once more knocked down. It's almost absolutely nothing. Here comes the timeout from Team Liquid. Look at this from Zipan. Oh, yeah. it's the lineup towards the end as Yampi and Solcast just stack on top of each other. Neither quick enough to be able to <laughs> trade the first as well. I believe that was safe. There's coordination a little off there, but, it, you know, that's what's going to happen in some of these spots when the pressure gets to you. I don't really like the way that Team Liquid have been playing their defensive round, Brent, and I'll tell you why. It, their composition doesn't have any of that passive information gathering, and so your two options are to try to fight for areas of the map on defense, to play aggressively over towards, you know, let's say tree, and then you back off and you try and re-push another area, and so you're constantly finding new information around the map and creating presence. Or the other option is to try and get, you know, some passive information from an op. And when you look at the comp that they're running, I don't think there is a natural operator. We've seen Redgar pull it out on Sova. We've seen Yampi playing it on Neon. This doesn't make sense to me, no matter how good Yampi is with the op. The, when you have a Neon comp with a Breach and a Sova, you've got to be aggressively taking information, not trying to sit passive behind an operator. I think that's been the wrong call for them, and I think it's put them in a really bad hole that even with the right strategy now, it would be almost impossible to dig their way out of.
Na'Vi look like they should be able to wrap this one up very quickly. Only need two more rounds. This one should be handed to them unless something goes awry. Lots of ults still left to be used. I mean, Yampi does have the overdrive. Redgar maybe could cook someone up with Hunter's Fury, but for now, fully grouped up. Na'Vi all on the south side of the map. Here it is, yep. Yeah. It's proactive, it's aggressive, but it's a paranoia. Fantastic time with that one. Angel TPing all the way out of there. I thought he was TPing even deeper. Damage being done behind the box. Dodging, juking, but Shao finally lands the shots there. Bullets raining down onto them. And there was that push out through onto the tree side. Nats being able to pick one up with his favorite gun, the Ghost. It's what made Team Liquid's eco so phenomenal when they were playing in the regular season. But here, still in a 3v4. And those weapons, you know, lost in places where there's no way to pick them up. Uh, Shao's weaponry is not going to be retrievable by Team Liquid. So this has got to get done with Sheriffs and Ghosts. And saved, tucked. Yeah. Nats is going for it. What Across is the this? rope, he spotted it. There's you no have to way. hold your ground, though. You have to hold. No one's looking. No one's looking towards it. There's no way. No question marks on the mini map, and he sped it all the way up. There's a gun for you. What a play. Got to do it. Backs against the wall. Safe. Gets his way out of there, no longer anchoring towards the back, just rattling off the shots, and there's definitely damage done. Players are weak, but a spike will get planted still. So three versus three. Hit in place, it gets two. Trying to close this one out cleanly. Bit of anti-synergy though, and Cena's holding with the operator. Can't exactly follow up inside the pit. No, he doesn't have any kind of angle, I don't think. Does not choose to invest his own. Holding it in his hands as the counter pit. Lay it on it. top, it's almost perfect. This round is for the game. Completely overlapped. Where will the dice fall here? Comes down to it, a bit of RNG. Lighting up the bodies. It's even so far safe. He's ran them down and seen it with the operator. Sticking onto it, rifle gained. Damage that still, everyone's weak and they all fall down. A Team Liquid took their risks, they took the gambles. But in the end, it did not pay off. Nats tried his very best, but the investment of that Viper's Pit, it was a good idea. I mean, you saw what Safe was able to accomplish. Everybody on Na'Vi dropped down to fractional health, apart from CNED, who was outside with the operator. No real way of accounting for that. Team Liquid are going to have one last chance here. Na'Vi only need one more. One enemy remaining. Cool. The round's already begun. Straight back to it, CNED. No time to set up his turret actually to watch that angle. He was late towards the north side. Angel walking up, so cast just spots it. Damage being done, attack with the bullet, but not enough to really bring down his opposition. And now there's a pace increase. All the way onto the side, but Yambi still watching it with the op. Disengaging, dodging away from all this utility with the nightfall scattering across. We definitely finding it difficult now to get a bit of a foothold here. The one player onto the side, they have to make a call to try and fight, and it's over towards Sand. Still, the spike is in halls. And Angel, he is in no man's land. He used two TPs to get into this spot. He's got to be able to get them out of it. I mean, he's he's the playmaker now, but he's so far away from being able to make a play happen. Behind he's the box. Another smoke up in five seconds. He could use that to try and isolate a duel or get himself out. Trying to force a fight. Stun. Shadows Dart. Everything being used. Attention dragged towards him. Safe. Marching towards the objective, but no. Backing away, playing it, because they realize they have time, and well, spamming the common angles once more. Shao's going to be falling. They shouldn't be allowed to plant here. Safe and Regar both have ultimates that can stop it. Tap once more, looking for the fight here. Completely grouped up, but yeah, Team Liquid. They had the advantages there in that round. It was handed them. See it 12 to 10. The amount of chances now that Navi has to close out this map. And things get easier for Liquid the more that they can win. Yampi's picked up the operator again. You don't anticipate them really going for too much defensive aggression when he's got that weapon online. But these ults are going to be constant threats. Whenever Safe and Redgar have these ultimates up, it makes it very difficult for Navi to be able to get a plant down. And it also counters CNED trying to go for any kind of space acquisition, taking control of the B site with his lockdown. 
Again, lacking that information, aren't they? You can see it. Got having to jiggle with the knife out. Yampi's actually taking a lot of space in A-holes, and that's going to be beneficial for them. I mean, two players right now are getting early information towards A, so they can stack 3B, and they don't have a bad defensive setup. You should run. Nade over the top. There's a lockdown. There's a Hunter's Fury to try and push this back and actually deal with it, and this time Nats, yeah. Definitely aware of it for the towers push. Rolling Thunder. But that's every ultimate. That, the two big ultimates have been used, and Navi still have a minute to work with. Sure, they're in a 4v5. But I think you've got to consider that a bit of a win. The entire time, though, Yampi has held on to that A-Hall's control. That's what's important, because it seems liquid peace of mind, knowing that they can stack players onto the B-site. I think Nats and CNED both just caught glimpses of each other there. And here it is, crossing. Using the smoke timers again, it's just random bullets that could come down to sheer chance. Or not, they can get into the side itself. There it is, follow the traces, and Nats will just pounce. Three in a round in total. Xiao left to do so much more, and he just cannot get it done. 12 to 11, Team Liquid steadily getting there. One more to bring it to OT. Nats has just been the hero for Team Liquid today. He was at the beginning of the first quarter here on Fracture. He was electric. And now here finding all the important left. kills. Dispatched. He caught a spot of CNED early on. While he was positioned at dice, repositions into tower, deals with CNED by counter spamming through the smoke and then also catches the player in tower who's trying to push him and squeeze him. Amazing play from Nats. He's up 20 and 14. That's what, a, uh, that's what Emil needs. Star player stepping up. Last time out here, of regular time, and it's Na'Vi. They realize it, the chances have been slipping away from them to close this map out in a nice clean fashion without it going to the OT. One more shot, one more chance. The gun rounds in this half have still been massively in favor of Na'Vi. Right, Team Liquid won the pistol, you know, both times. And Na'Vi is still 12-11 up. But that kind of stuff, it doesn't really matter if Liquid's able to find those crucial rounds that end up making the difference. The rounds that count for more than just one. Now, Zipan is going to be one away from his showstopper here. There's definitely a plan that Navi can construct around that ultimate. And like I said in the prior, with the Hunter's Fury and the Rolling Thunder being removed from the game, Team Liquid don't have the same level of tools. They're going for a double op setup. Oh, oh. You've got to be kidding. Yes, they are. Do Why they not? Have, do they have spare rifles on the floor? I don't think... I believe so. They, I mean, Rekka was... They must. ...chopping and changing it around. If they don't, they should, because Solcast has the money for it. Yeah, and it's the last round for it, so they, they must do, surely. Well, <laughs> I mean, this is one way. Try and hold some of that passive map control. Bring them down. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Angel only with a Sheriff in hand. Slowed down entirely. Yampi. He's got to oh, be worried about tunnel. danger. Oh, there's more than danger. This player's right in his face. Prowler shot, landing through. Damaged under Zipan. That could be crucial. I mean, Zipan will now die to two Vandal shots to the body as he pops his showstopper. The damage that was just done through that Prowler may end up making a massive difference. But just picking up the orb has dragged four players from the defense over towards B. Recon dart being used. That needs to be broken. If it isn't... It doesn't get broken. Okay, down Team Liquid know that this hit's coming through on A. They can stack it through. It's Nats who's holding it again. Anchoring stalled. Defender close to the corner. Doesn't stand a chance. No one is up against the rocket. Here with the door open wide. That is a beautiful face. The fundamentals on display from Na'Vi. And they found that advantage. Get into the site left. though. Plan needs to get online here. Op revealed. Yampi holding it from drop here. It didn't Plans close against you. I guess it's not cleared, yep. Still from Sand. This is dire straits, and this is the map. Na'Vi standing their ground. And heroics from Red Car, not enough in the end. 13 to 11. That's map number one wrapped up. Na'Vi performing on their map pick there, a fracture. They needed it. All of these maps, I think we can anticipate being just as close as what you just witnessed. These two teams separated by a hair. Yeah. And this has been part of the course, honestly. This entire year, if you look at these two teams and they're playing, I oh, think yeah. at most it's been a round differential of three rounds on every map that they've played against each other.
And what a time for Na'Vi to get back into a form where they look like they've actually got a chance to compete against squads of this caliber, against the EMEA winners. You know, they've recovered from the worst streak of Angels, Valorant, Korea recently too, <laughs> with four losses over the course of the recent tournaments. Nice. Recovered from that with the qualification of champs, and now looking to start out on the right foot here at group stage as well. You know, Angel said actually in the press conference that we don't have the consistency yet. That's just true. But winning champions is not about consistency. It's about being good here, right now, at this day, at this week. If you peak, if Angel plays well, if Zipan's getting the entries, if they have good strategies and are able to get onto maps that favor them, like Pearl and Fracture, they've, they've absolutely got a chance of taking down the big dogs like Liquid. Oh, yeah. That's what makes tournaments like this so special. I don't know when a team's going to go on a run. We've already seen it. You know, we know the caliber of player on either side. And this Group D games that we're watching as well. I mean, Group of Death, Group of Disappointment, whatever you want to call it. I'll be disappointed for whoever loses. Exactly. But it has been electric so far for our beginning here at Champs 2023. Plenty more action left to come in the series. Of course, do not go anywhere. We're right back after this. <laughs> When you play an actual ranked game, it's 50 minutes, but how much are you actually shooting? With Aim Labs, you can compete in over a thousand tasks that will prepare you for any scenario in any game. For the new ranked season, you play, you get points, you can compare yourself to your friends. With Aim Labs' new one-to-one -one Valorant maps, you get instant feedback on how to get better crosser placement, better peak efficiency. You can also instantly modify existing tasks with Discovery. Get started today by downloading the Aim Labs for free and join millions of other satisfied players.